Amen. Let's open in prayer. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. My Heavenly Father, I thank you. Father, I pray for grace right now. Father, we pray for grace. For grace. A spirit of grace on this meeting. Father, a spirit of grace on this meeting. My Heavenly Father, a spirit of grace on this meeting. Father, open our eyes that we can see. Open our ears that we can hear. Open our hearts like you did for Lydia, that we can attend unto the things which are spoken. Turn us from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto you. And Father, I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like you to turn with me to 1 Timothy 6.12. God has been encouraging us to believe. To believe. To have faith. 1 Timothy 6.12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. But that first line, fight the good fight of faith. Do you know that faith is a fight? Have you ever had to fight with your faith? Faith is a fight. It doesn't come free. It doesn't come easy. If you want to have the things of God, you're going to have to fight for them. Because we're in a world that they are not wanted. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And if you sit back and let him and don't fight, he's going to get everything he wants. Faith is a fight. Now, let's take a look at how Paul fought. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. I'm going to begin in verse 1. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. For, look at this verse. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined, Paul talking, I determined, I resolved, I decided not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. You know what a big deal that was? Turn with me. To Philippians 3. I'll show you what a big deal that was. This is a man that learned how to fight in faith. Philippians 3 verse 3. It says, For we are the circumcision, Paul, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh he of wherever he might trust in the flesh, I the more. Now look at here. Look at Paul. This is the Apostle Paul who determined, resolved, decided not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. He says, I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. It's touching the law. A Pharisee. It says concerning zeal. Paul had zeal. Persecuting the church. Why? He was, he was a child of Moses. And it says touching the righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. The apostle Paul didn't mess up in the law once. He was blameless. Blameless. He says, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. He says, yea, doubtless, I count all things, all things. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb. 
dung. Every year when I lived at home in Randolph, Ohio, every year about April, the dung truck would come because my family had a big garden in the side yard and that dung truck would throw it everywhere. If you don't know what dung is, look it up, all right? Paul counted everything he knew dung. Paul counted his heritage, his heritage, dung. He counted his walking in the law. Got that? Walking in the Ten Commandments. He counted it dung. He counted it dung. He put everything aside but Jesus Christ and him crucified. I determined. I determined. I determined. I resolved. I decided not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are you there yet? Are you there yet? Boy, I'm working on it. Nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Well, how do you do that? You believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, I know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Our power doesn't come except Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. Our ability to walk in this kingdom, to have God working on our behalf, does not work unless we know that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He had to be raised from the dead or we don't get it. We are still back in our sin. Jesus had to be raised from the dead. Paul determined not to know anything, anything. He determined not to know medicine. He determined not to know his education. He determined not to know his heritage. He determined not to know his ability to make money. You know, he was a tent maker. And apparently, he did pretty good. He determined not to know anything. No confidence in his flesh. No confidence in what his ability was. No confidence in well, how he thought. Intellect. He laid it all aside. He laid it all aside. He determined not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Turn with me to Isaiah 53, and I'll show you what he determined to know. Do you understand that Paul did not keep, he, did, he laid the law of Moses. He laid the Ten Commandments aside so that he would know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. The two things don't mix. There is a first, command, a first testament, a first covenant, and there's the second covenant. They don't mix. They don't mix. Paul laid aside the Ten Commandments so he could win Jesus. You know what? You can walk in those Ten Commandments. You can walk on blameless like Paul did. And when your child has a fever, you can't get rid of it by prayer. Your Ten Commandments won't do it. Your Ten Commandments won't do it. When you have your mother sick and you need her healed, the Ten Commandments aren't going to do it. Thou shalt not commit adultery is not going to help your mother one bit. It's not. You got a son on drugs. Your thou shall not covet is not going to help your son one bit. It won't help him. It won't help him. Jesus Christ and him crucified will get him delivered. Will get him back to you. Paul had to lay the Ten Commandments aside. He had to forget them. He had to put his trust in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two totally different things. The power is not in the Ten Commandments. The kingdom of God is not in the Ten Commandments. They are in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, him crucified and him raised from the dead for you, for me, for anybody that needs it. That father that has leukemia, Thou shalt not lie is not going to help him one bit. But Jesus Christ and him crucified for that father is going to get him healed. He's going to get him delivered. 
That's what we have to do. It was what Paul did. Determined, resolved not to know anything. Not to know anything but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, Isaiah 53. We will show because so many watch me that are not part of water of life. First, uh, Isaiah 53, 4. This is what we resolve to know. This is what we determine to stick to, to hang on to, to commit to above everything else. Above everything else. We have all been taught, you have to go to the doctor, you go. But you go with your heart and your mind on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And your going will be an act of humility and Jesus will meet you there. He'll meet you there. We just went to the doctors. I took Doyle to the cardiologist last Thursday. You know what that cardiologist said at the end of the meeting? She said, he's a good 90. He's a healthy 90-year-old. Why? He's got Jesus Christ and him crucified inside him. Now, what did Paul determine to know and nothing else Isaiah 53, 4, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Surely, surely when Jesus was put on the cross, he had all our disease, all our pain, all our sickness put on him. He bore it. He took it. I love that verse in Hebrews. It's so alive in me that it says that the, um, but what, Oh, I, the, thank you, devil. I bind you. I bind you. I bind you. I know you don't like this. Jesus offered himself without spot. Offered himself. Gave the body for every disease to get on. He gave his body to carry our diseases. He gave his body to carry our sicknesses. He gave the body to carry our curses. He gave the body through that eternal spirit. He gave that body to carry what is wrong with you. He gave his body. He carried it for you. Determined to know that and nothing else. It says, surely he has borne our sicknesses and carried our, dis our, carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5, that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment, the correction for our peace was upon him. Your poverty was put on him. Determined to know that and nothing else. Your safety now in this world was carried by him. Determined to know nothing else but that. And you won't be afraid to go to the grocery store. It says the chastisement of our peace, our peace, our welfare, our, our health, our safety was put on him. And with his stripes... Oh, Jesus gave his back to the smiters. He gave his back to the smiters for you. For you. There was no sin in Jesus. He kept himself pure until he got to the cross. And he gave his back to the smiters because with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. All. All. You got that? You're included in all. We have all turned everyone to his own way. We all messed up, folks. We all messed up. Thank you, Jesus. We all messed up. It says, it says that none, none are righteous. It says he was uh, the Lord... He, everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on Jesus the Father Jehovah laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all every one of your sins sin was put on Jesus our iniquities were put on that body 
The Father put it on there. The Father put all our iniquities on Jesus. This was a partnership like you wouldn't believe. The Father working in the Son and the Son working with the Father through that eternal spirit. Can you imagine Jesus on the cross? The Father through that eternal spirit pouring our iniquity on Jesus. Pouring it on Jesus. And Jesus took it. It says he carried it. He carried our sin in his soul. Oh, I remember the day God told when I was working out the gospel in my heart, getting that revelation, the mystery of the gospel, showing up in my heart, God ministering to me. And I was thinking about the sins, and God spoke to me directly. He said, Kathy, Jesus didn't carry your sins in a suitcase. They were in his heart. They were in his soul. He got punished for them. He went to hell for him. Jesus Christ and him crucified. He went to hell for them. Your sins have already been paid for dearly. Your sins have already been paid for dearly. Your sins have already been paid for dearly on the body of Jesus. And he took those sins to the lowest parts of the earth. He took those sins to hell. And he paid. He paid for those sins in hell. He says the wrath of God is pouring over me in Psalm 88. The wrath of God. God took it out on Jesus. So he wouldn't have to take it out on you. Do you see that? Determined to know that. Determined to know that Jesus Christ and him crucified, not anything else. And you watch you come out of that sin. That body, after it took the sin and after it died, a spear was put in his side. And he, that blood was poured out. The blood of that sacrifice on the cross. The Lamb of God. A spear was put in his side and the blood came out. And that blood, when Jesus was raised from the dead, when Jesus satisfied the Father in hell, when the travail of his soul in Isaiah 53, when God saw the travail of Jesus in hell, taking the wrath of God for you and for me, he was satisfied. The Father said, that's enough. That's enough. Determined to know that and nothing else. The Father said, that's enough. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with your sin being gone, being paid for. I am satisfied your sin is paid for. I am satisfied your sin has been paid for. Jesus walked into the holiest of holies with his own blood, and the Father met him, and you and I were redeemed. Know that and nothing else. Know that instead of condemnation. Know that instead of listening to the devil who's accusing you day and night. Oh, he talks. He accuses me of wearing the wrong shoes. He accuses you of everything. Everything. And, and, and all, all he's hoping for is you'll listen to him. No Jesus Christ and him crucified and nothing else. No Jesus Christ raised from the dead and nothing else. No Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead has forgiven and justified and sanctified you. No nothing else. Know that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all the powers of darkness. Know that and nothing else. Know that and nothing else. Know that you've been made prosperous when Jesus was raised from the dead. Know that your sins have been forgiven. That your sicknesses, that your pain has been paid for. Know that and nothing else. And it'll manifest in front of your face. Amen? It will manifest. I want to pray for some. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you that we have been redeemed. Father, I thank you that blood of Jesus redeemed us. Paid the ransom for every sin that has ever been committed. 
but one, and we haven't committed it. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. You know, some of you have thought you've committed it, and you haven't. That's the devil accusing you. I've been there. I bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. That is a wicked, lying spirit. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I've dealt with that thing. I bind that spirit. I shut it up in the name of Jesus. That lying devil, come out of that person in the name of Jesus. That lying devil, come out of that person in the name of Jesus. That lying devil, come out of that person in the name of Jesus. That lying devil, come out of that person in the name of Jesus. Come out of them. Come out. It's a lying spirit. You haven't committed that sin. You haven't committed that sin. You're still here. You have not committed that sin. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. You have not committed that sin. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Joel Davidson has a wonderful testimony, and maybe he'll tell it, or I'll tell it for him. He was called to go visit a man with a sick cow when he was a veterinarian. And he went into the office to get paid, and the, and the gentleman had several Bibles on his desk, didn't he, Doyle? Do you remember? And, and Doyle said, that's a good book there. Dole was just learning how to walk in the spirit. And the man said, yes, but I've committed the unpardonable sin. And Dole said, well, what did you do? And the man told him. And Dole said, that's not the, imparton um, uh, that's not the unpardonable sin. You haven't committed it. God set that man free that day. He set him free. God wants to set you free. We are so afraid. We are so fearful. God set us free of that lying devil. Of that lying devil. Set him free now in Jesus' name. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. That man said, if ever I have another problem, I'm going to get a sick cow. Amen. We determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Amen.